Spiritual Warfare Forum. Today I'll be reading from a book, When the Enemy Strikes, The Keys to Winning Your Spiritual Battles by Charles F. Stanley. The Face of Evil. Throughout our lives, we may face many different types of enemies. Some are motivated by personal reasons. A person may dislike you for any number of reasons. He may be jealous of your success or perhaps want to take from you something he desires for himself. Once in a while, you may be hated so much that someone might want to harm you in a very serious way or even lend your life. When you know your foe and are prepared for the attack, victory is achievable. But I have found that the greatest enemies are unknown and unexpected. For instance, a trusted friend who turns against you when she sees the potential for personal gain. A co-worker who gossips and schemes against you in hopes of a promotion. Or a thief hiding in the night waiting to rob you. The motivation that all these enemies share in common is found in the root of evil. Evil. It is something we know exists but it is not a topic we like to think about or confront. Evil has a face. It is dangerous, dark, foreboding, deadly. Do you know what, it, what is the ultimate source of evil? Are you aware of how evil operates? If you don't know how it works, then how can you adequately protect yourself and your loved ones against its sudden attack? Sorting out good and evil. We all know that both good and evil exist in the world. We are taught from early childhood that some things are bad and some things are good. We are taught as children that we need to develop an ability to distinguish between good and evil. As we grow up, we are cautioned to be alert to circumstances around us so we might avoid evil and choose to associate with what is good. But when I asked individuals if they have a difficult time discerning good from evil, they often reply, yes, I do. There's a lot of gray in the world today. Most seem to agree about certain types of evil. It's wrong for a parent to abandon a child or to abuse a child physically, sexually, or emotionally. It is wrong for, su for a suicide bomber to blow up innocent people. It is wrong for a person to kill another person in cold blood or to torture another person. There are a host of things that are immediate, immediately and universally labeled as wrong. Demonstrating racial prejudice, having blind hatred for somebody, embezzling or mismanaging corporate funds, cheating on a test, lying, failing to help a person in need when you have the means to help, stealing, committing adultery, exhibiting road rage, engaging in a drive-by shooting, kidnapping, raping, drinking to excess, using illegal drugs, and carrying out many other bad behaviors and holding on to wrong thinking attitudes. We can look at certain situations and recognize an aspect of evil embedded in them. For example, a wasting, painful disease, suffering of all kinds, world hunger, abject poverty, intense persecution of good people, or deep agony over the loss of a child. We may not be able to pinpoint the exact nature of or cause of the evil, but we sense that a bad situation has an element of darkness to it. We recognize that things are not as they should be in a perfect world. We are quickly to we are quick to label all these actions, attitudes, and conditions as being marked indelibly by evil. But then comes the difficult question. Is the person who committed this evil act or holds a wrong attitude an evil person? Well now, people say as they backpedal into justification, the person is probably good deep down inside. He really didn't mean to do it what he did. He's just a product of his upbringing, his culture, or his fanatical religion. He just got blinded temporarily by greed or lust. The person did not know what he was doing. He was temporarily insane. 
We often conclude people are good, but their behaviors are bad. We may even say, we love and hold out hope for the sinner, but the sin is bad. And all of that may be true, but what we do do when evil strikes you. What do you say and how do you respond when you are the victim of spousal abuse, the object of a terrorist actions, or the one badly injured by a drunk driver? What do you do when your loved one is held hostage, your child is abused by an adult you or your child trusted, you became home, you came home to find it burglarized, or you received a diagnosis of a terminal disease. How do you discern from good and evil when you are the one who is the victim of an evil attack? What do you do when you recognize that you don't always act in a positive, godly, or wise way towards other people? What happens when the mirror of stark reality is held up before your face and you are forced to admit, I am the one who is inflicting pain. I am the one who is lashing out with an evil intent or wrong attitude. Recognizing evil, dealing with it, seeking to pursue good and avoid evil, acknowledging evil in ourselves and turning it into good. These issues are at the core of our human existence. If we truly could be objective about our lives, we would probably find that we spent the majority of any given day trying to do things that we label as good and right and avoiding situations, relationships, encounters, and circumstances that we label as bad or wrong. At times, we fail miserably at both. We don't do what we know is right, and we do what we know is wrong. How do we keep our balance? How do we effectively pursue good and turn from evil? What do we do when we suddenly seem to be the victims of evil? The questions are at the heart of this book. The answers are rooted in God's word. The Bible clearly teaches us two things about evil. One, you have power over the enemy and he has a name. For years, some people have talked about God in general terms. He has the higher power, the force, or the man upstairs. The truth is, good has a name and his name is God. Evil also has a name. His name is Satan or the devil. The devil refers to a spiritual being who is the supreme personification of evil. Lucifer is the, is the Bible name for one of God's archangels who rebelled against God and was cast to earth from where he functions as Satan or the devil. He seeks to rule from the realm of the unseen, the spiritual dimension. Satan may use what your mother-in-law says or a co-worker does to come against you. He may use terrorists, criminals, and other people to cause you harm or strike the fear into your heart. However, the person who verbally abuses you, the thief who robs you, the critic who malings you, the rival who undercuts and thwarts your good efforts, or the assailant who beats you is not your real enemy. The real enemy is the devil who prompted the person to speak hatred of you, steal from you, do his utmost to destroy you physically or physically injure you. Behind every evil person, there is an evil lack that lurks the enemy of your life. He exists in the spirit realm, and he is relentless in his pursuit of you. He is 100% evil, and he has a plan to destroy your life. Satan is your enemy.